What's up everybody, my name is Brian Earhart with Team Discraft and today I'm gonna to be showing you my current philosophy on how to throw a forehand with any disc in your bag. The forehand is one of the most useful shots in disc golf. When learned properly, your ability to hit tight gaps in the woods and scramble from uncomfortable situations can dramatically improve. With that said, with over 1,400 molds currently approved for PDGA play, it can be a daunting task to figure out what discs actually suit your forehand best. Today I'm gonna to be showing you my current philosophy on how to manipulate the spin and speed of the disc to be able to throw a forehand with any disc in your bag. Let's get into it. In regards to shot shaping, the forehand is still a very underdeveloped skill in disc golf compared to a backhand. Even if you only use the forehand for some niche situations, I firmly believe that having a general understanding of how to make the different discs in your bag fly can only help you level up as you move forward in this forehand journey. Not all forehands are thrown the same. My current way of teaching this can be summed up in what's called the spectrum of follow-throughs. In disc golf, we have discs that can be designed to be very fast and overstable, and we have discs designed to be very slow and understable. Getting good at throwing a forehand with a slow, understable disc does not make you automatically good at throwing a fast, overstable disc on forehand. So with that, I wanna show you how we can work through this spectrum of speeds and stabilities and change the way we throw to make these fly the way they're supposed to. So at the top of the forehand follow through spectrum, we have the very fast overstable discs and the one in my bag is a machete that I currently use for that slot. The faster and more overstable the disc is, the higher up and farther out in front of you, you need to get the disc in order to fly. Fast overstable discs need more speed in them than they need spin. So you have to make sure you're not popping a forehand with these types of discs, you are throwing a forehand with these types of discs. So the faster and more overstable the disc is, the more it's gonna feel like you're throwing a ball. And again, you're getting it high and out in front of you. The slower end of the spectrum, the slower and more understable the disc is, in my bag I have an old Comet that fills that slot, the lower and farther back in your stance you release the disc. And when we go towards the top of the spectrum, it feels again like throwing a ball. The lower you get on the spectrum, the more it feels like cracking a whip. So we're not letting our upper body come through and back leg come through. We are almost falling backwards and cracking our wrists like a whip. We want all the momentum that we generate with our arm to stop and go into our wrist spinning the disc. Because like I said before, fast overstable discs like more speed than spin, slow understable discs like more spin than speed. So obviously we just covered the two extreme ends of the spectrum and there are so many different types of discs that fall right in the middle of it. How do we throw those? We throw those by kind of giving it spin but still letting our body follow through to give it a little extra speed to get them to fly. So we still pop our forehand, we still give it a little bit of a pop but we let our upper body come through the shot, we let our back leg follow through just to give that disc a little extra speed. A lot of fairway drivers fall into this category. Some stable mid-ranges will fall into this category. If you experiment with these different types of releases with any disc in your bag though, you'll find that there are a lot of shots out there that you've never even tried. All right, so a quick recap. At the high end of the follow-through spectrum, we have the fast, overstable drivers. 
They need to get high up in your stance and out in front of you when you throw them, and your back leg and upper body should follow through the shot. On the low end of the spectrum, we have the pop forehand. We have the slow, understable discs. This should feel a lot more like cracking a whip, and your arm should feel like it stops, and all the momentum goes into spinning the disc. Exploring these different types of forehand releases can broaden your overall understanding of the flight of a disc. It can also help you level up your versatility and overall control of your forehand as well. Leave us a comment down below with your favorite forehand disc and let us know any other topics you'd like us to help you level up. <laughs>